Hello and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And you have myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday the 19th of October 2014. And not a bad day today, really. And we were supposed to have massive gales and stuff like that, but I didn't see it. It was a bit windy last night, but um, outside and inside, I think. But uh, otherwise, the the weather wasn't too bad. But Right, our guest on tonight is a lady called uh, Danielle Laverity. Oh, some people know uh, Danielle as Chloe George on YouTube and Danielle has been doing fantastic YouTube videos and exposing a, um, a lot of people regarding things that are going on in government and in the, the entertainment industry. So we asked Danielle to come on and to just to give us a heads up and we have a, a chat about a few things. A few things that we want to talk to her about that she mentioned on the video for clarification and just to understand things because the more this information comes out the better the more educated we get and the more we can do things we can do something about it but before we do anything we'll find out what the communication channels are yes we will communication channels please mary the communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room Thank you very much, Mary. 0469271212 is the magic number for the studio this evening. Remember, uh, you can also catch us during the week. You can ring that number at any time. You may get an answering machine or you may get a real human being at the pens if anyone happens to be passing at the time. Anyway, we also have the chat room as well on oymradio.com if you have any questions. For ourselves or for our guests this evening, you can uh, pop along there. That's oamradio.com. You will see the live chat button on the left-hand side, as many of you already have. And a big hi to everyone that's in the chat there already. So, yeah, that's where that's the place to be. We also have, and you'll see on the website, we have the Facebook page, the social or the un-anti-social media, whatever you want to call it. And we also have YouTube as well. So, all bases covered. Alan. Brilliant, Steve. Okay, just uh, just a couple of things as usual that we're going to go through before we bring Danielle on in a few minutes. Um, it's been amazing on Facebook to see so many people waking up. Unbelievable the amount of people across the country that are waking up to what's going on. I, the, a big thank you to Phil Hogan, really, because without him, we wouldn't have had Irish water and we wouldn't have had so many people waking up. And between people protesting and having I Will Survive dancing down on Fox Hill, right out on the street. So what a protest, because the police are so used to conflict. But yet, the residents were out dancing in the street to I Will Survive, which is brilliant. I mean, that's a great way to do protest. And obviously, the Gardaí didn't know what to do, because um, they didn't know how to handle it. Was there any arrests? (laughs) <laughs> I don't think there were, you know. I would have been, I would have loved to see Gardy get involved in dance as well, but I don't think that was going to happen. I'd love to see that. Imagine, the, imagine the Gardy also taking off the hats, putting down their their uh, their handcuffs or whatever, and just joining in the people and you know side by side. I believe as well. I don't know how true this is. Uh, it was kind of second hand information, but I believe some of the Irish water workers, the installers, have actually handed in the notice and walked off the job because they just they they only signed up. Um, to do a day's work, and they're just finding all these uh, the, the protests. It's just too much for them to handle. So, it's seeming a lot of them have handed in the notice and uh, walked off the job. Of course, my missus, being the uh, the optimist that she is, she said that they, they probably those jobs will probably probably be filled by uh, foreign nationals who are bodybuilders or you know, go out and push the people around. So, yeah, we we'll wait and see. Right, okay, I've just got, uh, when you were talking about the, the Gardaí putting the hat down and dancing, I was getting this uh, image of George Michael, let's go outside, you know the video? Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll have to think of something else now. Okay, yeah. now we had uh, Barry Trow on talking about uh, the dangers of the water meters, and last week we had uh, Lloyd Morgan and we had... Lloyd Morgan and Michael Bevington talking about I'm glad um, you remember that. talking about Wi-Fi and everything else. And a big shout out to Parents for Safe Technology Ireland, who have set up a base- Facebook page over here in Ireland to promote the dangers of Wi-Fi and you know uh, hyper electric sensitivity. They have a Facebook page, so if you are interested in that subject, pop over to Facebook if you're on Facebook and search for Parents for Safe Technology Ireland. And you just uh, like the page, and they'll keep you informed of things that are going on there. And um, a, a pretty good uh, group. 
Um, one of the ladies I uh, made was a uh, lady I'm dealing with there during the week I was talking to. He, she's the lady who kind of organised the guests for last week's show because we're kind of making the point of the dangers of Wi-Fi for children in school and also um, the technology in general. Um, so just pop over there on Facebook. Anyway, Steve. Yes, sorry, I was just typing into the chat box there. I made a spelling error, as only I can do. Yeah, I uh, want to mention on Sunday, we have mentioned this previously, and the time is getting closer. Uh, it's uh, the the 30th of November, International Medium Mark Impey. He's going to be doing some platform work in the Old Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre. That's in Old Castle. Uh, tickets are a mere, a mere €5, Euro, and money raised will be going to charity. Mark was actually on this programme Last year, and as I said, I have mentioned before, he's a genuine, genuine nice guy. Uh, he really, really uh, came through for us when he was here. He was just, he went over a point. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a nice a nice chap. But uh, you can actually check out his own website. Uh, that's circleofwhitelight.com. That's circleofwhitelight.com. Again, Mark is an excellent medium, and it's a night not to be missed. You can also pop over to the... The Facebook page of the All Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre as well. If you are on social slash anti-social media, just check that one out. All Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre. You can uh, find out some more information there. But again, one for the calendar. It's Sunday, the 30th of November. Uh, All Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre. Brilliant. Now, we uh, like to give a big shout out to companies that actually do not support um, the government. And to, we have two companies who are, or they help people. And we have two companies here which we're going to give a, a shout out. The first one is um, we found out from Mead Anti-Eviction Ireland. And it's a company in Dublin called Locktech.ie. And they're locksmiths. And you can contact them on 087-337-1000. And they are refusing to work for the banks um, and refusing to carry out evictions. So we're more than happy to give them some advertising. So pop in there. They're in Dublin. I think they're near the Keys, I think, I believe. And if you if you track them down, locktech.ie is the website. But if you pop in there, you can say that you heard them on OIM and thank you very much for supporting the people and not supporting the banks and not carrying out the evictions as uh, the banks expect. Now, if all the locksmiths got together and they have, the, they have that locksmith foundation, um, they have a kind of a, a kind of like a union. If they all kind of said, we're not going to support the banks, then the banks would be stuffed, technically speaking. So, you know, that might be an idea. The other company who we're going to give a shout out to is Apache Pizza in Dundalk. And basically what Apache Pizza did in Dundalk is they delivered free pizzas to the protesters at the square. So well done, Apache Pizza, for going down and feeding the protesters. Fair play to you there. So if anybody's in Dundalk, give Apache, Apache Pizza your uh, support there by going in and saying uh, hello and um, tell them you heard them on OAM Radio. And if anyone from Patchy Pizza is listening this evening, we're going to be at the protest on the 1st of November. We look forward to a pizza. Brilliant. Mine's a me feast. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Seems that our good friends of Fine Gael have been caught buying, yes I kid you not, buying likes on their Facebook page. That's according to the Irish Examiner. The, di- the party's digital media... I can't believe they have a digital media department, but the the Fine Gael Party Digital Media Department has claimed uh, its Facebook was spammed after eagle-eyed social media users noticed many of the likes on Fine Gael's budget question and answers were coming from fake accounts. Fine Gael claimed the the post was spammed and the party has since denied buying likes. Yeah, I am sure. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd well believe it. That's that's all I can say. I would well believe it because you know, I mean, someone like Fine Gael, they don't get to where they are today by uh, being honest and 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 transparent. They get it by being dishonest, and uh, yeah. So uh, well, they were caught out, and uh, I'm sorry to hear that. They better look next time, lads. The people are awake. They they're awake to your your little ploy and your little tactics and all that carry on. So yeah, continue on. Best of luck. How's your week, Steve? Yeah, my week's been been. Um, Kind of uneventful, really, to be totally honest with you. I wasn't, I wasn't feeling too, too uh, hot during the week. Um, I was feeling a little bit sickly, actually. So I was just, I wasn't doing much, to be totally honest. Um, the only thing that I that I can mention is anyone who's a long time listener will know that there are certain members of my family who are are not awake 
their time hasn't arrived or they haven't you know they haven't reached that that point but my sister has and as as i knew was going to happen she kind of she woke up and before i knew it she was joining um different groups she was on loads of different facebook pages she was getting information she was on the protest and just uh, during the week i believe she she just hit that that wall she she just she's born out and she's she's kind of wondering now did she make the right choice by you know opening her mind looking behind the curtain or peeping be you know out the window to, to see what's really going on so uh, all i can do is if she's listening this evening is, is hope that uh you know just take it easy as as i've said before when you when you get all this information it's sometimes it's way too much information it's overload and that's mm. that's all it is and i know you want to run out you want to tell people and when you do tell people you can't understand why they're not kind of you know gobsmacked and you can't understand why they're not getting angry but it's all part of the process mm. so if anyone else kind of is at that same point as my sister just remember that it is it's it is a journey and you can't experience the whole journey at once. It has to be experienced one step at a time, one day at a time. That's all. That's all we can do. And if if at any point in time all this information is just coming in too thick and too fast, switch off. It's it is as simple as that. You can just turn away, uh, go and do something else, do a bit, a bit of gardening or something therapeutic, and then come back to it at at a later stage. But it it, it is a journey. And I say fair play to my sister. She's 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 on that road now, and I w- I wish her the best. And that's, Excellent. That's that, that, that's it now. That's oh. good news. Yeah. How was your week? Um. Well, a few things going on there. Um. The first of all, um. Chris is on the chat at the moment. There, Chris. Uh, you, I'm, I'm sure you're listening. A big thank you to Chris on the chat there because Chris organised, uh, for Miles Johnston to come over from the Amash project, and um, we met up yesterday. Uh, myself, Chris, and Miles. Um, and we had like, I mean, basically we were talking non-stop for four and a half hours, really. And I managed to get an hour interview, which I'm currently working on the video at the moment. So I did a video interview at Miles. So as soon as that's ready, we're going to have that up on YouTube and we'll get that out. So um, it was very, um, it's exactly what I, I completely enjoyed it there. You know, it's open minded intellectual conversation and uh, open minded being we just we just talked about everything. Really, really did talk about everything. So fair play to uh, Chris as well. Um, for for organising that, and it was uh, it was just a, a really good day. It's just a pity Steve wasn't there, but Steve had other commitments there. But uh, the video will be available as soon as we I have it done, I finish the editing, I'll get it up there. So uh, good one, uh, good one, Chris. Well done on that. Now during the week, I also went to um, a meeting. I won't go too in depth what the meeting was, but there was a motivational speaker there. And had I known he was going to be there, I would have left because I I lost the will to live. Basically, at the end of the day, the reason why I say that, I've kind of seen it done, I have the t-shirt with these motivational speakers over the years in the corporate industry. And this chap was kind of, he was, we had a room full of motivated, closed-minded people. And that's a very bad combination, you know, to have motivated, closed-minded people. They should be motivated, open-minded people. And that's very dangerous. And he was, he kept talking about motivation, motivation. But we didn't talk about having an open mind when you're dealing with things. Um, so that's why I really wanted to leave. But under the circumstances, I couldn't. But as soon as the claps were at the end, I got up and I flew out the door. And somebody said to me, who was there, said, oh, you couldn't leave the room fast enough. She said, she, she, she could see dust on, <laughs> on my feet going out the door, you know. So, because um, it's, yeah, it just, you know, some people are good and some people aren't. Um, the other thing as well, uh, and again, this is something to think about. I was watching Russia Today, and Ron Paul was being interviewed by by Larry King, and he said um, he was talking about the Scottish devolution, and he said something very interesting. He said, "If you go into a house or a job and you cannot leave, does that mean that you know you are you are a slave? If they don't let you leave, if you go into a house or a job, are you a slave?" And then you know, I kind of I thought, well, welcome to Ireland because you know. You, uh, you are a citizen. The government to say that you are a citizen under the corporate government system that we have here, like in the UK. And um, they attach the citizen to your human being, flesh and blood, as you all know. Um, and I'm just curious, how do you detach from being a, cit- a citizen from 
society. Obviously, you know, we have this thing called society, but nobody can put a name on it. We know that you have the law society and the cancer society and all that, but nobody can put a name on a human society. People call it, might call it mankind or human society, but where did I sign up and where did I join? And because I never signed a contract, I never signed up to any society, I never paid any membership fees or anything like that. So I think this is an ongoing thing and we've talked about this before, but the way the government works. But we must be in slavery because if we can't get out of the system we're in, then it must be slavery. Because otherwise we should be able to get out. We should be able to go to an office and write a piece of paper, write down and say, I wish to leave this society and I want to stop being a citizen. Thank you very much. Bye bye. That should be it. But if we can't do that, then we must be in slavery. Hence why all the TDs I emailed in County Mead and asked them, are we in a representative democracy? None of them came back and told me that we were. Maybe that's why, because we're not. We're in a dictatorship. So that was, uh, so that was uh, something that happened during the week. And um, yeah, that's really, that's really it. That's really uh, all my week. So what, without further ado, we're going to get Danielle on and we're going to be talking about and the bits and pieces that she's been doing. But if anybody does have an escape route, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I think people... There, there's your escape route right there. What? Agent. You signed up when you assumed a legal name. No, well, see, I was too young. Wasn't I? So that means the contract's null and void. Because I wasn't fully transparent, and my parents didn't know what they were doing. So You made an honest mistake. I did. Yes. Your, your Honour. Your Honour. <laughs> Before I go to jail. Okay, so um, so now some of you uh, probably seen Danielle's videos on YouTube and she's put herself out there. Fair play to her. Brilliant information. She's exposing a lot of um, things got to do with the governments and the politicians and entertainers. And she asks um, straightforward questions uh, to these people on, on the YouTube videos. And for her good work and the work that she's been doing she's been attacked as we all do get attacked down the line by people <clears throat> and i've said before you know it goes back to the 33 percent guys you know 33 percent of people will like you 33 percent of people won't like you and 33 percent of people be sitting on the fence just worry about the 33 percent that like you and don't worry about anybody else because it's impossible to please everybody you know, so um, and we kind of had a quick chat before we went live, but I want to bring Danielle in now. Good evening, Danielle. How are you doing? Hi, I'm really well, thank you. How are you? Not too bad at all. Listen, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, much appreciated. I know your your little ones are sick, and um, they're not well, and uh, so we understand if you need to pull away and sort them out because the family is priority. Excellent. No worries. Now, before um, we get in to start talking about certain things. Um, how did you kind of open up to what's going on? What was the kind of catalyst for you? And why did you feel you wanted to do more than just do, you know, just write about it? You actually put yourself out there by doing the YouTube videos. Tell us the, the stages and what happened. Um, well, originally, I started off quite a long time ago. Um, I've always had this fascination with serial killers and, and all kinds of morbid sorts of things, you know, that, that kind of wondering how, what, what is it about these people? What makes them tick? How are they capable of something that the majority of us just aren't, absolutely aren't, and couldn't comprehend? Um, and the more I started looking into it, the more I realised that there were links to government and, and various organisations. And I started to realise that serial killers aren't a phenomena at all. And they're actually um, mostly constructed by... Um, by things, whether it be MK Ultra or you know Tavistock or whoever, um, and as I was doing that, I started to see little things, you know, like stuff about 9/11, and I started to get more and more curious. And I watched uh, the documentary that Alex Jones did with Aaron Russo about uh, his relationship with uh, Nick Rockefeller, and it literally just blew my mind completely blew my mind this is the uh, freedom to fascism uh, video yeah? Mm. yeah and uh he he did like a, a an hour or two hour long interview where he spoke about um how rockefeller had basically offered him uh the free pass to um get, to be one of them mm. and he turned it down and i i just i'd i'd never heard of this stuff before i had no idea that there were organisations on this planet trying to destroy humanity. I just, 
I, I was gobsmacked. And at first, I just thought, this is ridiculous. It can't, it cannot be. But you know how it is. It snowballs and, and more and more information just pours in and in and in. That's right. And you realize so quickly that actually you've been conned your entire life and you get angry. You get angry and, and you just want to tell everybody that they're being conned, you know, like like um, you were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, and then you're stunned because people don't want to know. And you just think, what? What? I can't I can't get my head around this. And uh, I was writing about it for for probably three or four years. And eventually, uh, basically what I'd done was. I used a lot of comedy and a lot of satire in the way I spoke about the government and about certain um, high profile people and what have you. And it caused quite a bit of a stir on my Facebook page and things like that. And somebody said to me, you should try YouTube videos. You're quite funny. And, and you know, it, it was really lacking. Basically, everybody's so terribly serious, which I completely appreciate because what's going on is serious. But I think it takes all kinds of people and all kinds of methods to wake people up. And being serious, being angry and, and trying, to, trying to force people to listen just doesn't work. Um, and I have found that, I mean, I've been doing this for about 12 weeks and by being quite shocking and being quite funny about it, I have woken people up. Yeah. And, and that is such a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, I've, I've seen a, a number of your videos and I have to say you get straight to the point and you use humor as well, which myself and Steve have always said, you know, doing the radio show is, is great, but you have to have a bit of humor as well thrown in as well, because the things that the governments do do are, are, can be so ridiculous and funny in, mm. in a kind of weird kind of way. You know, I yeah. mean, what's happening over here in Ireland with the Irish water meters? It's just they couldn't organise a pee up in a brewery. In you know? a brewery, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just, and you have to laugh at the, the incompetence of the government and what they're doing. And you know, and this is what people are doing. This is why these people down, uh, the protesters over here, were dancing to um, uh, "I Will Survive" in the middle That's of the road. That's just the most fantastic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I love that. I'll have to send you over the video on Facebook. Oh, and that'd be brilliant. Yeah, I do. But um, but and and what you're doing on your videos is exactly that using a bit of satire and a bit of fun. But the, the you're getting the content across, which is brilliant. Mm. And unfortunately, doing that, I noticed that you know people obviously you get your trolls and your shields and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it's going to attract them, isn't it? Of course. And I think the um, it, it's a good sign of of just how scared of you they are. Oh well, just the, how much of an impact you're having because. Mm. I've been attacked really, really heavily, mm. and they they don't seem to understand that I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that it. I really don't care. They they've tried everything, and I think they're kind of like sitting in the corner crying because yeah. they don't get that I'm not bothered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you see, the thing is that the way you um, with these people, as you say, the trolls and the shells trying to attack you, and, and you don't give a damn about them, which is the best way to deal with them. Because, I mean, it goes to show you are getting very close to good information. If not, you'll be a spot on because the fact they're attacking you means you're really getting the information out there and they, do, they don't want you talking. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, people say to me, I just don't believe that it doesn't upset you or hurt your feelings. It doesn't. Because to me, I, when, when you know what trolls and shills are about and why they're there, it cannot possibly hurt your feelings. And if you've got the guts to put your face out there and say the kind of things that all of us say, then you're not going to be somebody that's going to be hurt or put off by a few a few people calling you names. You know <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, again, you know, I just said there about the thirty three percent. They're the people that need to be that you just need to focus on in your life, yeah. your friends and your family, and the people that care about you, and then everybody else. Well. They can, you know, they can decide for themselves. Now, there's a couple of things that um, you did say on the video, and I want to have a chat with you about it because I, th I thought it was very interesting. It kind of not so much ties in with what, what Brian Gerrish said in UK Column because we've had Brian on um, mm. a few times. But one of the things he said on the video, and myself and Steve were talking about it as well, you mentioned that the registration process in the school system 
makes the school money and that's why they're so focused on having the kids in there. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that and how, and how you found that out? Um, basically, a, a school is run like a company and the local councils um, give certain amounts of money a week to each school and to put pressure on the school, what they do is they punish them by not giving them as much funding. So if if they have a lot of absent children, they reduce the funding each week for, for the school system. Um, so every school basically has to battle to get their full funding to do everything they need to do. Um, and it all comes down to the children attending. They basically punish the school if the kids aren't there. So the school, what we've had here is um, we've always had a system that if you want to take your children on holiday during term time, the children are allowed 10 days a year. You have to put in a holiday request. And if they've been at school enough, if they've got a certain percentage of attendance, then the school will grant the ten, like the week off or whatever. They have now decided that that's absolutely not allowed to happen and that if it, it used to be a fifty pound fine if you took your children out of school during term time. And most people thought, well, what would I rather? A fifty pound fine or paying an extra three grand for a holiday. Um so now what they've decided to do is you will be given an ASBO because it will be classed as antisocial behaviour. Um social services might be involved. Um you will be fined both parents will be fined 120 pounds each and your child may be expelled from school and not given a place in the school system wow if you do that this is how desperate schools are to get that child's name on that register every day that's incredible now i understand well now you understand why i left the uk <laughs> yeah and this well, is before that came in done well, what they've done now is there's no, there's no, you know, like it used to be a book that the teacher used to tick. Now they've done it electronically so that they cannot fake it. So if a child comes in after 9 a.m., they have to mark them absent in the morning so they lose money. And right. they've done it so it's electronic, so it goes straight to the local council department so that they cannot fake it. Wow. Um, have you heard anything about that, Steve? Over here in Ireland? No. The same thing? No. I'll, I'll be honest, I only had an experience, uh, well, we had an experience similar to that only last week because my daughter needed time off, and again, it is it is term time, and she needed two days off to pursue. She, she's into kind of acting and stuff like that, and she needed some, some time off, and my wife just contacted the school and said that she will not be in school on this day and that day, and the school just, their, their response was, that's great. It's it's a great opportunity for her to get to do something like this, you know. And there was not there was absolutely no problem at all. But she is catching up with with the work. Uh, she has she's been doing it now this weekend. Whatever work she missed out on. But it seems like what you're saying, Danielle, that's kind of very draconian stuff. It's really it's, re it's more like a prison than, than absolutely. Than a well, this this was the thing, and that was what inspired the the video that I posted on YouTube that day. I was absolutely stunned at the way I was treated by the school and, and the way my son was treated by the school. And when you are awake to the system, and and it becomes so blatantly obvious. I mean, uh, all it was the only reason I found all this stuff out was because all it was was that my son had had an upset with a teacher. This teacher refused to come and speak to me. She just couldn't be bothered to deal with a parent. And when I said, well, I'll take my son home until she speaks to me, and the blind panic on their faces was incredible. So, of course, as soon as I, I spotted that straight away and I thought there's something more to this, and I started speaking to teachers. My next door neighbour is a teacher, um, and I know a few college lecturers and, and basically just spoke to as many teachers as I could to find out and they all told me, yep, we get paid. That's why we have to make sure you're all there. Mm. I know, I can definitely uh, relate to the fact that if schools are businesses and they, mm. have to, they have to make the money and everything else and budgets to stick by and, and, and all that kind of stuff. The registration process was very interesting and I, I, I'm going to assume uh, we have um, people on the chat facility here so or if anybody listening to the show can actually confirm that this has taken place over in Ireland as well, that would be very interesting to find out. Um, but just moving on to the other information, and you've you've kind of called out a lot of people on your videos. 
for people who haven't seen your videos, do you want to kind of give them a, an idea of what you do in the video and, and you, the people that you're calling out and why you're calling them out? Yeah. Um, I mean, basically, the, the, the way I've tried to do it is by simply by asking these people questions. There are so many politicians or celebrities and, and various high profile people that have really seriously important questions hanging over their head. And obviously, we know that the mainstream media aren't going to ask these questions. And I've had a lot of people say to me, oh, you need to be very careful um, regarding slander and all kinds of stuff. The way I look at it is I am, as a human being, I am no different than anybody else on the planet. No, we are no different. And we have the right to ask questions. These people are supposed to have our best interests at heart. And when they're not acting in the appropriate manner, in, in the positions that they have, we as a society absolutely have the right to ask them why. And I, people are so terrified of being sued or, you know, they, they just... They live in that fear, and I get that all the time. Please be careful. You, you're going to get yourself into so much trouble. I don't live under that fear. If I get in trouble, I get in trouble. I, their rules are made up simply by them to frighten us. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not causing anybody um, physical harm. I'm simply asking these people to answer questions like, why did you... Um, defraud the parliamentary expenses why did you allow this to happen why did you decide to cover this up um obviously there are aspects to my videos that some people can't cope with like the swearing i do swear a hell of a lot and i do get people say to me do you really need to swear you shouldn't do that it cheapens it i'm angry i've got every right to be angry mm. i have to live on this planet and so do my children and I do not, I just do not believe that we should have to sit back and take what these people do to us. I to totally agree. I think, well, you know, the, the, the fact that, as you say, you're a human being and you're asking questions and these people are supposed to be holier than thou and they're elected by us anyway. And they mm. should be setting an, an example. And if they are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, well, then it's only fair that we can actually question them. Exactly. And we should be in a position where if the elected people aren't doing their job, if they're committing crimes and if they're defrauding us and they're not acting for the people, we should have the right to remove these people from government and elect a new one. We should have that right. They shouldn't have the right to tell us that that's how it's going to be and we have to shut up. They've scared people into not questioning anything anymore and so much so over the last 20 years even the the change the the dramatic change in people in society who have stopped fighting for their rights is astounding mm. well they say if you don't know your rights you don't have any exactly you know and you have to fight for them now here's a concern that i have uh, danielle as i say you, what you're doing is just calling them out and asking them a question and i don't mm. think asking somebody a question is against the law even though it's in public it's still not against the law so the whole kind of idea of being sued when you all you're doing is asking them a question that's all you're yeah. doing so i, I can't but, see but this is how brainwashed people are they're that terrified we've got to a point where even thought is a crime to, to suggest that somebody could sue you for simply asking them a question, have you done something wrong? Yeah. It's insane that is to that, even suggest it. That is mad, but I suppose this is how people fear the system to a certain extent, and we always say you have to get rid of your fear. Um, yeah. That's just the way you have to deal with it. Now, the things that we talk about, everything that's been going on with the Jimmy Savills, and um, Ralph Harris and all this kind of stuff that's going on and we see an awful lot of it over here and there's a lot of exposure and people being exposed uh, about what's going on and you know what's frightening and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of a bit concerned about it is that we don't hear anything really over here in Ireland and no. I kind of, I'm finding it very hard to believe that there's certain people in 
you know, areas of maybe government and entertainment that are, they can't be squeaky clean. We can't be that clean. There has to be something to it. Yeah, absolutely. There, there absolutely is. And I, and I think that's something, uh, again, you know, in certain parts of the world, you know, I, I know that in, in other countries, people are given so much more of the truth about what goes on in the UK than we ever are. You know, and and I'm sure it works the same in Ireland as it as it does here. We don't hear much about what goes on in Ireland. I think we get maybe we maybe we get more about people like Bob Geldof. I'm not sure. And Bono and, and the likes. But um, to to a great extent, no, we don't hear very much about what happens in Ireland. No. And, um, and we don't hear much about any of that. Now, um, it's just very strange that we, we get a lot from the UK, but we don't get a lot of that over here in Ireland. And I don't believe that we are squeaky clean. I do believe things Absolutely are going not. on. Absolutely yeah. not, You know, so that has to be exposed. And like you have the BBC, we have the RTE, and the RTE are the uh, propaganda station for the government, and that's all they do over here, like the BBC. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, people say, you need proof, you need proof, you need proof. You know what? Sometimes... You don't need to see every single document, every single lie. It, it, you know, there's a pattern with these these organisations, and they're corrupt to the core. It's what they are. State television. It. I mean, you know, we hear all of this stuff that goes on in North Korea with their state television, with their lies about this and that and the other. And sometimes I think to myself, is that stuff really going on over there? Are we just being lied to? Because they talk about state TV and propaganda. Yet we have it every single day and people don't even realise. Mm. They have no idea that the BBC is state propaganda television. Yeah, the, the, it's the same with RTE. How does your family feel? I mean, do they know that you're doing videos and how, are they open minded? Are they closed? How do they feel about it? Um, I have had word that my family have seen my videos. Um, I don't actually have a relationship with my family <clears throat> um, because... For, for a number of reasons, but no, they would, they're probably mortified, <laughs> to be honest. Um, my ex-husband's been pretty decent about it. Um, he has his reservations, obviously, because we've got children. But I've got to say, he's been really pretty decent about the whole thing, um, as, as have my friends. Um, but then I, I kind of, I'm in a position where nearly all of my friends are awake people. But that's and the ones who aren't humour me. Yeah, no, that's well, that's excellent. And I know that since you've kind of put yourself out there, you have been doing an awful lot of work and doing uh, talks in True Juice and everything else like yes. that, I believe. Tell us, how, you know, how we kind of escalated and what you've been involved in. That was just the biggest honour ever. I mean, when I started doing the videos, um, I put I put two or three really short couple of minute videos up and they, they're probably the most um, shocking. And all I wanted to do really was at first to grab people's attention and get them watching, which was why I made some jokes about the Queen's anatomy and various other things, um, because I just wanted people to see it. And then I thought, if, if I do that, hopefully they'll come back and then I can start getting proper information out. Um, and my target audience was people that aren't aware of the system. Uh, it wasn't for the well-informed. It, I mean, it's in, it's entertaining for the well-informed, um, so I've been told, but yeah. it was mostly for people that don't know what's happening. And I think after the first three videos I put up, they went viral on Facebook after about two or three days. Mm. Um, and I remember saying to my best friend, oh, my God, I've had 250 hits on my video. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve weeks later... I counted yesterday and I'm on uh, 208,000 hits on YouTube in 12 weeks. I hope you monetized that, have you? No, I haven't. And the reason I haven't is because, obviously, there are a lot of people in the movement that think if you are trying to make money, then you're in it for the fame and the money and whatever. And to be honest, for the amount of money you would get out of YouTube... It isn't worth it. And I said from the start, I'm not going to monetize my channel because I want new people that come along to know that I am not in this for fame or money or anything. I just give a damn about what's going on. Mm. Well, as you know? I said before, you know, we were we went live. 
myself and Steve are the same. We have a we have a moral conscience, and we survive on donations, and we do have expenses, obviously, that have to be covered. And most of the time, well, say you know, ninety nine percent of the time, we cover the expenses ourselves. But every donation, every bit helps, and it just goes yeah. towards. And because of the donations from the the listeners of the show. We have managed to get new equipment to make the broadcasting better, to have a better service, to have better systems. And then, obviously, the support from the likes of Vin and Yoda and a number of people out there who have just purely just said, look, we like what you do and we're going to help. And, again, something that it's great in the troop movement that we all kind of help each other because we're all in the same arena where we, we, are, being, um, we are being trolled and just shields out there. And we are being attacked. And it's great to have some kind of camaraderie with fellow people who understand what we're doing, no matter what way we do it. You know, some people do video, other people do radio, other people do protests. Wherever it is, once you're out there and you're doing something and you have that moral conscience and drive, it's great having the, the backup and support as well. Oh, absolutely. And I think there are there are people in the movement who are misguided. They've got to the point where they're so conspiracy minded that even even the people that are doing something just purely because they want to help are also looked upon like they've got an agenda. And because we all help each other out, there are people that see that as us all sticking together and that we've all got an agenda and that we're all basically just trying to scam people and whatever. But they don't realise that we put our time into this. Most of us put our time in, into this for absolutely no monetary gain. Yeah. And the donate buttons that people have on their, their sites or their shows or whatever, it is not to make money. It is literally bare bones funding the equipment whatever is needed to put a radio show out or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm in the position where um, my YouTube videos don't cost anything to make. I literally uh, sit on my bedroom floor, gab into the camera and upload it. There's, mm. there's no, um, no expense with that. Um, obviously, I do now have the radio show uh, um, that Vin helps uh, me and Lou put out on a Thursday night. Um, and, Everything has been the equipment. Everything else is is with Vin's help. We don't have any of it. Vin helps us with all of that. Um, so, you know, and for, for, for instance, my website. Um, somebody so very kindly, a complete stranger, donated a .dot com website to me a couple of weeks ago because he liked what I was doing and he just wanted to show his appreciation. So, there are incredibly kind people. In, in the truth arena and and I think people can be quite uh, quite um, over the top with with how negative they can be yeah well I, I totally agree and we're, we're gonna say and myself and Steve are, are happy to say we do have an agenda and our agenda is this to wake up as many people as we can to put a stop to what's going on that's Absolutely. our agenda yeah, and so, that's my agenda. It's Lou's agenda. Everybody else that that puts their self out there, and I mean, you. I don't think people appreciate just how much this impacts your life when you do put yourself out there. Yeah, you know, it's you. At times, it can be a dangerous game. Mm. At times, you um, you realise that by putting yourself out there, you've become a target. Um, to the system and, and various other things and they do try hard to take you down and and there are people that say oh you're you're a small fish in a big pond that um, they're not bothered about you oh believe me they're bothered about each and every one of us mm. that wakes somebody up yeah they really are and that's what that's what they're fearful over we i mean i've, I've talked to you on facebook off uh, off air and told you what happened to us um, and we've had a fair share of trolls and shills and all that kind of stuff. And um, we do, I mean, for for us, you know, OAM is near enough, like, I won't say 24-7, but it's like a full-time job. And if I was to rely on, as I say, we, we it's great getting donations, but the donations, if I was to rely on the donation solely, the two of us would have been dead of starvation and yeah. we'd have been <laughs> on the streets. Because there are, you know, uh, equipment costs involved and, you, you know, there's internet costs and all, you, the equipment that you have to get and you place equipment and you've software to get and all that kind of stuff. 
and it all adds up and we plough everything back into to OAM because we want to make it the best we can from a radio station point of view to get it out there because we we enjoy we always say we're only two funny enough I was talking to Chris yesterday about this and we don't have any we don't have any delusions of grandeur what we do is it's we're two guys and two microphones and that's all we say we do and we want to get the truth out there and we want to get people on like yourself and other guests to come on and give their opinion on what they think of the world and let the listeners decide for themselves what's oh. going on and you know but get the information out there because we're being let down by our, our TV stations and our radio stations and it's great like with people like yourself jumping on board and we need more people like you but I believe we do have a question in there Steve uh, well yeah Dan- Danielle do you want to comment on what Alan said before I go to the questions um, no 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 you go for it you go for it oh, okay. <laughs> okay Andy has a question he's just Andy's just wondering who, who's, who are you going to go for next <laughs> Do you know what? That's quite an interesting one, actually, because obviously a lot of my videos uh, have been based on um, particular people. And just recently it started to evolve quite a lot. Um, and I've had to start covering all different types of subjects. People are constantly every day saying to me, can you cover this? Can you cover that? Um, there's just so many of them. Um, it, it's It's kind of like I've got to the stage now where... I see what's happening week by week and I will all of a sudden someone will pop up and I think, yes, you're next. And I was going to cover Fiona Wolf, but I just feel like there's much more that needs to be covered. So the next my next main target is ISIS, the creation of ISIS, because I go on about that all the time. And somebody has been begging me literally for about three weeks to do this. So that um, that's going to be my my next main one. But I also really want to cover the mental health aspect to the truth movement as well, because it's become apparent to me just how significant this is to a lot of people that turn to um, to the reality of what's going on. Well, you have to. Sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, go on. I was just going to say about the, the cognitive dissonance and this ODD syndrome that we talked about, Lauren Holly from the uh, uh, from the Hollies, um, she was locked up or something. Fuji's. Was it Lauren? Fuji's? Fuji's. Fuji, sorry, from the Fuji's. Yes. And ODD, um, I'll have to find, just track down what the ODD stands for, I have to remind myself, but basically people who are, it's like, like Cameron came out the other week, didn't he? And David Cameron said, if you don't um, agree with what the government says, you're going to be an extremist. Yeah. I mean, and as and as I'm sure, you know, obviously, I have my um, my weekly top list, <laughs> yeah. list I'll say, that's right. of, of people. You can say that top tossers. Yeah, that's OK. Oh, that's a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've, I've cut, that's evolved a little bit now as well. And I have top troopers of the week now as well, because it is really important to highlight people in the truth movement or in, in the truth arena uh, who are putting themselves out there. And on a daily basis, I'm seeing more and more people standing up and, and, and speaking out. And it's really great to yeah. to see that. And that was another reason I started to do this was because I don't want to be a face of something. I want everybody else to do what I'm doing in whatever form, whether it's videos, whether it's blogs, whether it's standing outside buildings, protesting, whatever it is. I want everybody to get up and say enough is enough. Yeah, and I think people are, I mean, it's amazing, just this week, as I said at the start of the show, the amount of people waking up, and it doesn't have to be got to do with the bigger picture, even if it's only, you know, arguing about water meters and and protesting about water meters, I'm happy with that, because all it needs is for them to, you know, give out about that, and then they start questioning and things, and they go, well, if the government are doing that, what else are they doing and not telling us about? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's a snowball going down the hill of information, yeah. you know? Uh-huh. Even if, even if it was just a case of people realising that, that these governments shouldn't be where they are. And, and, I mean, realistically, you know, you're talking about um, private, private school educated toffs with millions of pounds who sit quaffing champagne and and having these extravagant lavish meetings and lunches and traveling all over the world and whatever else and then telling all of us that we need to tighten our belts it's all our fault because we've spent too much money i mean just it's ludicrous 
how can people not see that? It's basic. It yeah, is no, that basic. It, it, it's, it's madness. And we're the same over here. I mean, we have... Well, this is, this is what's going to be the next thing, uh, Danielle. We're going to be saying... You're going to be getting emails now saying, Danielle, when are you going to start doing End the Kenny and the Irish government and picking on them? <laughs> I think that's going to be next on the list. <laughs> well, do you know, that's something... Um, it, it's something I don't really know that much about. But... I am more than happy to, you know, people send me information all the time. And if I'm educated about it, I will talk about it. If it's something I don't know what I'm talking about, then there's just no point. You know, I always say I, I'm not the most knowledgeable person, but I know things are wrong. Well, it's a, it's a good feeling, isn't it? You just know. Absolutely. And, it's, yeah. and when it's, as you say, when it's in your face... When these guys like uh, Osborne with the, the photo of him with a prostitute and cocaine on the table and, and then they turn around and they're in the Bullington Club and they went to Eton or what, all this kind of stuff they've done and then they come out and start saying, telling us that we have to tighten their belts when they're doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's ludicrous. It really well, is. that lady, that, that mistress actually contacted me and we've spoken over the phone a number of times and I mean, it's just incredible. The stuff they've tried to do to her to shut her up is amazing. Yeah. But they can't. They can't shut her up because she's too public now. Exactly. Get it on video and get yeah. it around. The the best way to do it is to put it out in the public and people see it. Well, this is the thing. And people say to me, you need to be careful. But do you know what my attitude is? You have to shout even louder. As soon as they start to, to know who you are, the safest way to be is by being louder and louder and getting more and more people to listen. Because if, if something happened to me now, it would be so obvious. Yeah. Exactly. You, you you reach a point, don't you, where um, you're too your your face is too well known to shut you up. Mm. So they have to try and discredit you instead. Yeah, and you're not suicidal, and your brakes are okay. Uh, uh, I don't drive, thankfully, and no, I'm not suicidal. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Okay, That's, they're the two things that they go for, isn't it? That's the excuse. Yeah, I'm glad I don't drive a car. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Steve, you have a question for Danielle? Yeah, Danielle, this is just what, something that came into my head there a moment ago. I mean, let's say, for argument's sake, you're, you're, you're very public, and let's say there are other people who are, who are saying similar things, and they're all very public, and what if you were threatened, and then, you're, well, you'd say, well, I'm going to shout louder, but what if they, if they threatened to harm your children, or take your children off you, manufacture some BS reason to remove your children and, and, and let's say that was you know, it was it was something that they could do and it would they've stick. already uh th there's all there's already been the suggestion that i um that uh, about people should contact social services and say that i'm a terrible mother um in i mean that's a really difficult one to answer but looking at the situation that's happened with chris Spivy, which is exactly what is happening to him at the moment they have tried to stitch that man up in an incredible way. And watching how unbelievably brave he's been, the best course of action for him was to be even louder, which is exactly what he's done. He's exposed everything they're trying to do to him. And I think if they tried to take, take his grandson off of them now, too many people know and they wouldn't get away with it. And I, and I think if if he was to shut up now, they would still destroy his life anyway. But even if so, they if they did take his grandson off him, I mean, let's say for argument's sake they did, who who would know? I mean, you'd know, we'd know, other people in the the troop movement, if you like, would probably know. But as you, as you know yourself, most people get their get their daily programming from the broadsheets and mainstream yeah. media, and that's never going to be reported on there. No, of course not. Absolutely not. Um, but. I just think if you make a big enough fuss, there are a lot of us, and making a big enough fuss, um, there are certain questions that they just cannot put themselves in the position to answer. Um, when you're talking about a person who has, I mean, now they've put him in the mainstream media, they've, they've given him exposure in the mainstream media, so now a lot more people do know who he is. Um, I think they'd have a very tricky time trying to get away with this, but... I suppose it's one of those things when we throw ourselves into this, we know we're taking a massive risk. And I know that 
that there's the possibility that I might be threatened. And I suppose all I can do is say that I would fight even harder if if it came to it. Who knows how you'd handle it individually? But at the moment, I'd say that I'd fight even harder. Well, I'd, I'd have to agree with you on that because there is a, a saying um, that, uh, well, not so much a saying, but uh, 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 what happened, I, I come across a saying, well, I suppose it is a saying, they said, it, it says, any secret society that has been exposed throughout history has not survived. And so exposure seems to be the thing. So yeah. you shout, I mean, to shout even louder if something goes down, really puts them on the spotlight, and they don't want that. They want it done in the shadows. Yeah. So, uh, so, and like, even though the broadsheets and BBC mightn't say anything, social media is such a phenomenal thing at the moment. We are seeing it massively over here in Ireland with the water meters. So yeah. many groups, so many people. All social media. I mean, the protest we had over a hundred thousand people last week, last uh, Saturday. Um, and 100,000 people and that was just purely people power social media that's it yeah you know so by by, shout, by shouting it louder and obviously we all are involved in the alternative media so you know you can guarantee that if something happens we'll all get wind of it and we'll be all on, on the shows and we'll be all saying what's going on and exposing it and that's the last thing they want to to happen you know absolutely absolutely so tell us, um, I had to say that uh, I loved I loved the video I did with Thomas when you channeled Jim, <laughs> Jimmy Savile. That was very... Was if, if anybody's not seen it, I recommend you pop over to Danielle's YouTube channel and they channeled Jimmy Savile, um, oh, her and Thomas Sheridan, and that was very funny. Do you know, that has got to be one of the funniest, funniest things I've ever done. I mean, <laughs> I had no idea Thomas was going to do that. And it just so happened that my best friend had come up to Hull with me um, to come and watch the talk and to meet Thomas and everything. And I'd said to Thomas and everybody else that was there that evening, you know, obviously I, it would be really brilliant if you would be in top tossers with me this week, you know. Mm. And obviously Thomas being Thomas agreed straight away. He's fantastic. And my best friend happens to do the best impression of Jimmy Savile ever. And, I mean, he can do any impression of anybody. He's incredible. But, mm. obviously, he did this impression of Jimmy Savile. And everyone thought it was so hilarious that during the video, Thomas just straight away said, I'm going to channel Jimmy <laughs> Savile. And I just thought, oh, my God. And I thought, I'm just going to let him get on with it. Honestly, I have never laughed so much uh, you can see in the video that i'm just completely i've completely lost any control now it was it was very and it prompt you which was even better it was it was yeah. very good i mean we'll get all your details at the end of the show so you can put out your links and people can pop over and see your videos because you'll get more from there but i would say to you in all honesty i mean if you're going to i mean you're you've you've been very popular and the information you've been putting out there has been very good and you're going to be asked to do more and more stuff and it does start impacting impacting on your finances so you know don't worry about the trolls and shills um the people who are genuine and know what you're doing and why you're doing it will back you regarding the monetization it's only peanuts it really is it's it's chicken oh. feed but look it's it's a couple of quid towards expenses if you're if you have to get a train up the north to do true juice or something like that it just kind of it, it helps it helps so, oh, absolutely. soften the blow and it really doesn't come cheap blimey the travel expenses are incredible you know it really can be very costly Exactly. So I wouldn't uh, worry, worry about it too much. And then if you have the website with donate button, because you are putting yourself out there, you are spending a lot of time. And it's not just about that 10 or 15, 20 minute video that you're doing, but it's the time that you spend. The same with what we do here. We only do a two hour show once a week, but it's the, the time that we put in and the research and yeah, the, the oh, things that it, we do. Absolutely. And I think this is something that people don't appreciate is I do, you know, I do 15 minute videos a couple of times a week, but this is 24-7. Uh, you know, I have people constantly sending me links. I'm constantly researching. I'm constantly answering questions. I'm doing radio shows. And, you know, they, I think people do just assume you, you whack a 20-minute video online and that's it. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And then once the video has gone up, you then spend days answering more and more questions from people on YouTube, Facebook, Google Plus, wherever. That's you know? it. 
it, it is 24 seven. I wake up and I've got like a hundred inbox messages, you know? <laughs> exactly. And plus you have a life and a family that you have to also sort out. Exactly. Yeah, of course. And, and I think people really underestimate how much time goes into this. And like I said to you before, um, off air earlier, it's a vocation. Mm. This isn't, it's not a job. It's a vocation and it is, it becomes your entire life. And like, you know, there are times where you have to step back and I'm starting to understand that now. Mm. At first, I just didn't take a break yeah. um, because I felt bad if I didn't answer everyone's questions straight away or whatever. Mm. And I'm starting to realise that actually it's very, very important sometimes to just switch off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to you have to go and off and do, yeah. the, do the shop and do the ironing, do what has to be done and step away from it because it does take an awful lot of energy. And It does. Yeah, you and when you're that. dealing with such sometimes horrific um, content, subject matter, it does impact the way you see the world. And you do have to remember that not everything is bad. You know, you, you have to remember um, to, to live and to get some happiness, you know what I mean? Oh, totally, totally, uh, yeah. I mean, again, you know, if you look for negativity, you, you'll find it. But the same way, if you look for positivity, you'll also find it. And it's, yeah. the, it's the balance between the two of them that you have to work on. Absolutely. You know, I think we have more questions coming in, Steve. Yeah, we do. Uh, I'm just doing a copy and a paste here at the moment. Uh, yeah, we have a comment, which I'm going to kind of fashion it into a question, Danielle. Uh, I haven't seen all your videos. I don't. I don't claim to be uh, uh, to have seen them all, but I have seen some of them, and other people have seen them as well. And they said that. Well, they're wondering why did you choose the bedroom floor for your backdrop? And you know, if if you're going to be covering ISIS at some for, further stage, will you be dressing up in army gear as well? <laughs> um, why did I choose the bedroom floor? <clears throat> The reason I chose the bedroom floor was because I've got a little docking station on the bedroom floor and I basically, uh, to keep the camera still, I just popped it on there and it was just the easiest, most obvious place. So that is it's, that is the simple, boring reason why I sit on my bedroom floor to so, make my videos. So you have no kitchen table, no? No, I don't have a kitchen table, no. So... Um, so the bedroom floor was uh, was was the only option, really. Actually, um, actually, you're a lawyer now. You do have a kitchen table because there was one video you did. You were in the kitchen. I think you were cooking dinner at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it was the work surface. That's the, it. Um, the thing was on the work surface. Yeah, that's it. No, I love the video you did where you said that you're gonna be in disguise and you buy you bought that nose and glasses with the. Big <laughs> <laughs> that was the Esther Rancid video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have got more disguises. Um, I, every time I go out shopping and, you know, I, I walk past a, a fancy dress shop or something like that, I see something and I think that's going to come in really handy when I cover this or that or the other. So I've got a Halloween costume and um, uh, I hadn't considered dressing up in, in army fatigues. Um, uh, we'll see. I, I don't want to cause um, undue offence. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have to you have to be careful on the line. You do. Yeah. It, I mean, I've crossed many many lines, but you know, it, all in all in a good cause. I I don't want to do anything that's going to be offensive to uh, the audience. I'm I'm trying to get to you know. Exactly. Well, we had a, there's a chap on our chat facility called Qwerty, and he just wanted to know that you know we've had a number of videos up on our YouTube channel. How come? That um, Danielle has had so many so many hits, then uh, that it's been so quick, you know that you've, your hit count has gone up compared to we've been gone a long time. And I said, well, obviously Danielle is a lot more attractive than we are for starters, <laughs> and we don't put our face up there on video. I take offence to that. Yeah. <laughs> take offence, take a saw, take a boat, whatever you want. Yeah, you've never <laughs> seen me when when I'm going out and when I'm all done up. <laughs> Face for radio, Steve. Face oh, yeah. for radio. You know? you've, made me, you've made me blush now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, well, I, 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 I mean, I, I can't comment on that side of things. I think maybe it's because, it, not, not any way because of the way I look, maybe it's because I'm a girl 
Um, I use language that people don't expect to come from this tiny. I mean, I'm five foot and seven and a half stone. You, you know, I, I look like a little Tinkerbell thing and, and you just wouldn't expect the kind of language <laughs> that comes out of my mouth. Um, and well, it's quite, to quite be so tough. Yeah, but it's quite inventive language. That's what I like yes. about it. And, yeah, and you know what's been fabulous for me to see is people are starting to make up their own ones and, and they're hashtagging some of my phrases, which is just hilarious. I find it hilarious. And, you know, I do think there needs to be much more humour. We need to start laughing and um, life's tough and, and people need to laugh more. And I just love it when people, I'll, I'll use one of my phrases in one of my statuses and then I will get this barrage of people making up their own and posting them on my status. And it just, it has me in fits. It absolutely makes my day. Well, we just had an email in from the Oxford English Dictionary and they're actually watching their <laughs> YouTubes. They're planning to use some of them words in the next year's edition. <laughs> <laughs> people have said to me, can you make a little dictionary of all of your phrases and words? <laughs> there, you, there you go. That's going to be, you're going to have a tutorial video on the words that you use starting yeah. from A down to Z. People do say to me, they say, I was in the pub last night and I used such and such or such and such. Obviously, I can't say what they are. No, no. <laughs> something show. got to do with flaps or something. I don't know. Something like yeah. that. Anyway, <laughs> now, tell us about your radio show. Tell us why you went into your, your next move. Obviously, you did the videos and you felt, hey, you know, does it, we can maybe do a radio show. What, what happened there? Obviously, Lou Lou has been on the show, good friend of OAM with Brian. And um, so tell us all about that. Um, well, Lou actually approached me with regards to doing the radio show. And obviously, Lou works uh, with UK Column, and then she has her own radio show during the day. So she has to be um, very grown up and very sensible and very reserved. And and when Lou first started to first saw what I was doing, uh, we became friends really, really quickly. We hit it off so brilliantly. And I think for Lou, she wanted to be able to be as um, ludicrous as me at some point and obviously she can't do that at the column yeah and and the pair of us encourage each other terribly and then thomas encourages us even more um and i think she just really wanted to have a bit of fun as well as doing the serious stuff and working with me and because we're on so late at night we can do that well it's and after 12 o'clock isn't it that's when the yes. show goes out yeah i mean it's killing us you know, going on live at midnight every Thursday night is killing us, obviously, because we're both parents. We both have school runs to do and various yeah. other stuff. We both get up at the crack of dawn. Yeah. Um, but it is really brilliant fun. Mm. No, I, I, had, I heard the, the first show you did with Thomas. Yeah. Um, again, we great. were heavily sabotaged the other week when we had Chris Vivi on. Yeah, I was going to talk to you about that. Tell us what happened. Um, well, basically, I mean, I'm in, I'm in a position where uh, most of the radio shows I do now get targeted for whatever reason um they they want to shut me up um and i i think it was the combination of me and chris Bibby and lou <laughs> all in one place was just too much for the system to handle <laughs> and they frazzled us lou had her whole internet connection completely destroyed her computers went down everything completely um chris lost his connection quite a few times i lost mine and we didn't even know if the show was actually going out. We had no idea if we were on air. We mm -hmm. just carried on going. Um, and most of it went out, fortunately. But it, it happens regularly to Chris. And obviously, with as, uh, with as much that was going on with him that week, and they were watching him in a big way, I think. Yeah, it, uh, we've experienced it this end. Um, mm -hmm. And even yesterday, I was speaking to my brother-in-law, who's actually listening in tonight, I believe. And twice over Skype, um, it went down. And um, hence why I said to you about, you know, Uvo, have a look at Uvo rather yeah. than Skype. Because um, that's peer-to-peer -peer rather than centralised. Um, and it might be better to use that if you're, you're bringing guests on your show. Because we found that the quality is much better and the, the functionality of it is much better. But um, it just, you know, see how you get on and see what happens. Again, yeah. it probably depends on the guests you, you probably, you know, have on your show. Yes, and, and Lou and I have discussed this and we've decided that what might be a good idea is when we have very high profile guests on, we're actually going to pre-record so that there is no way that they can um, mess with our transmission. 
Yeah, well, that's that's fair enough. The only thing, obviously, with pre-record, um, and we we have it here, is that you like the interaction of the the listeners in the chat room, but you don't yeah. get that with the pre-record because you can't ask that's, questions. And that's the problem. That's yeah. that's the main reason we're going out live is so that we don't lose out on on having people who are able to ask questions and stuff. But I think that you have to weigh it up at times, and when you've got somebody incredibly high profile who's going to give people exceptional information. There are times where that has to outweigh what people might want to ask, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. And talking about questions, I think we have more coming in, Steve. Yeah, Danielle, we do. We have a question from Chris. Chris is wondering where does Danielle get her information from? Um, I do all of my own research. I mean, at, at first, I was I was having to do tons more research, but people send. I get so much information sent to me now. Um, but I, if I see something, I will immediately start looking. Um, and I've got a bit of a Columbo thing going on then. And I've always had that. I've got this really uncanny knack for just finding stuff out. And, and I trawl the internet. I trawl YouTube. Um, I ask people questions. If there's a subject that I'm interested in, I'll go and ask people that work in that field. Anything and everything. And I will just uncover as much dirt as possible. Well, that's good. So I mean, you're not just reading other people's information on the internet no, and refashioning. No, no, no. Yeah, no, that, that's. I've been accused of that, but no, no, I don't. Ah, yes, we all don't. We all don't do that at all, <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of people and you know the information coming your way, uh, there was a, que- a question come in earlier from one of the listeners, Querty Q W E R T Y. That's a strange name. But uh, I don't know. Uh, Querty is wondering how does Danielle have a prominent mistress contacting her? She appears just two months ago, and all with uh, low thousands of views. I'm guessing that's on the YouTube. And I think he's just wondering how come, like you, you're recently new on the scene, and all of a sudden you have someone like this prominent mistress contacting. Right. You. Uh, basically, somebody posted my video of George Osborne asking questions to George Osborne. Somebody posted it on Twitter on this mistress's Twitter page and she retweeted it and said, who is this woman and how do I contact her? So one of my, um, somebody who'd added me on Facebook sent me a message and said um, that this mistress, Natalie Rowe, is trying to get hold of you. So I um, tweeted her and said, I'm here. So she sent me a message and sent me her phone number and she called me. So that's basically how that happened. <laughs> okay. No more interesting than that. Okay. Well, no, that, that's cool because, I mean, we've often found as well that sometimes uh, when you're, as uh, this is, I'm, I'm quoting Alan here, but sometimes when you're on the right road, uh, doors just open for you. And obviously yeah. that's, that's happening to and, you as well. And, and I, I think the only reason my videos went viral was uh, for two reasons. The first reason is that, like I said, I don't think people expected to hear someone say the kind of things. I I mean, the first video I did was to David Cameron and I'm sitting there looking fairly innocent and what have you and being quite polite. And then all of a sudden I say the most horrific swear words. Um, And I think there is a general hatred of David Cameron. Most people don't like politicians. So I purposely targeted somebody that would be there is a laughing stock and where most people would agree the second reason was that thomas sheridan posted it on his facebook and obviously he has a massive following so as soon as thomas posted it other prominent people started to see it and and ordinary everyday people started to see it on his facebook so they started posting it and it just went crazy and I think people were so stunned at, at the names I was, or the questions I asked the Queen, the questions I asked Prince Charles and David Cameron. They were really what did it. Okay. A fair answer. Um, have, you, have you seen, just out of curiosity, have you seen Danielle's videos? Have you seen I have seen some of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen all, but I mean, yeah. I, 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 obviously I, I will check them out. I, I think I'm friends with you on Facebook as well. I, mm-hmm. I believe, uh, but uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, just going back, we ha- had a question in there, and it's when you said you're kind of you have a little bit of a Columbo thing about you. Mm. Chris is just wondering, um, do you have the trench coat and the cigar? 
That's that's a thing. That's going to be on the video, isn't it? Do you know what? I love the questions people ask me. I was asked a while ago if I had a coconut bra. That was Thomas who asked me that. Um, I do have a trench coat. Uh, I haven't got a cigar, but I might go and get one now. I've got the Trilby hat. I have to say, you actually did a video, or you've done a couple of videos, where you actually answered the questions that people have asked you. Yeah. And some of them are just kind of... Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. Because the way I see it, right, is is a lot of people ask me stuff. I don't always get time to answer everyone. And I thought the be- a better way of doing it is just writing them all down and then answering them via YouTube. Um, it's a lot It's a lot <coughs> easier to do it that way. Um, and I, obviously, I am becoming quite well known for responding or answering uh, the, the trolley people. And I don't do it to try and beat them. I Anybody who sees the videos I make with regards to the trolls can see that I am, it's so tongue-in-cheek, it's unbelievable. And it just makes me laugh, you know. I, I'm not trying to... Uh, yeah, who, who are the people that are doing? I know you posted up a couple of troll videos. Who are these saddles who are doing this? Um, there's quite a few saddles, actually. I mean, there are a couple that are that are definitely um, being paid to do what they're doing. And they're quite high level. They infiltrate people that are well known. They, they gain their trust and then they, they uh, try and bring them down. Um, I'm fully aware of who they are. And luckily, I found out very, very quickly and they weren't able to. Um, but I'm also aware that that doesn't stop them from being a threat. The rest of them, uh, there's a little group of people on YouTube who are a well-known paedophile ring and they've targeted me quite heavily and they've targeted a few other people uh, and I'm slowly but surely finding out who these people are, where they work and what their names are. Um, And then I have the group of people that generally are just, put out by the fact that I'm around like Tom Carhill for instance (laughs) who doesn't seem to be the full ticket but you know looking at his YouTube everybody is a counter intel pro everyone right that's right you work for MI5 you're on the same uh, pay uh, pay uh, I think the the, the same pay level that we're on absolutely I work for MI5 I work for the CIA I work for the Tavistock Institute um, I if if I move my hand, if I blink, if I do anything in my video, if I look to the left, that's a signal to Tavistock that I'm I'm answer, I'm saying things they want me to. You name it. My bedroom has been called a green screen. My bed is. They've told me my bed's fake. <laughs> um, they've told me. I I was even told that um, no no white Western woman of 35 years old, would have cushions on her bed, so I'm clearly a plant. But that's obviously somebody who's never dated or lived with a woman, because the first, thing that, the first thing that happens when you move into a flat, the, the cushions come out. And, exactly. Um, yeah, on Any the, man that walks into a woman's house yeah. will see cushions everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, seeing it done, I have the T-shirt. Yeah, yep. I can definitely vouch for that. Yeah, you've mm-hmm. got a T-shirt with cushions on, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, what Danielle did was actually, she did a video to say that I wasn't green screen and actually physically opened up the window and showed people the outside, you know. But, oh, okay. I gave them a little oh. tour of my house, yeah. But, but that, was, no, that was CGI, Danielle. Yeah, absolutely. Of course C- it was. It's CGI. I did say, there'll be people that think an entire house has been put into a studio. Yeah, yeah, well, they did it on, um, you know, EastEnders, didn't they? It's amazing Street. what you can Nation do Street. with a phone and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, YouTube. Yeah, no. It's I've, just incredible. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I have to say, uh, it, it, it gets ridiculous when people start does, saying yeah. things like that, you it know. Does. I mean, you just have to laugh at them, Steve. Yeah, Daniel, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the, the videos around YouTube. I think, and QWERTY thinks the very same thing, that you and this other guy will be great to have on the show, just both of you together. And that's the taxi driver. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen <laughs> him? Yeah. Of people have said to me, "Please do a video with Chunky Mark." Do you know what? If he wanted to, I would love to do it. I I, I wouldn't know how to contact him or 
or anything like that. But um, I don't even, I don't think he's ever heard of me. I haven't got a clue. But that would just be hilarious. That might change after this evening. He, 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 you might, he might get in contact with you. That, I tell you, I'd love to hear that, Joe. <laughs> but we'd have to, it had to be censored or after 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if it was after 12 o'clock with Danielle and him? Yeah. That would just be, but I would <laughs> love to meet that man. He has me in stitches. The, the I think gr- he's absolutely brilliant. The guy I would w- love to get in that taxi and just have a right old rant with him. I really would. <laughs> oh, I tell you, the guy walking the beeping machine be working overtime. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, he'd be finished, wouldn't he, poor man? <laughs> <laughs> so what's uh, what's um, what else is on the agenda for you? What do you plan to do, and what you're are you going to be going back up to Truth Juice or what's happening yes. with you? Uh, I've been invited, very kindly, been invited back up to Truth Juice in the new year to do some talks on my own up there, um, which is a little bit nerve wracking, but um, I'll give it a go. Uh, people are asking me to do talks and shows everywhere, really, which is lovely. I've had. A couple of um, producers get in touch with me with uh, regards to <clears throat> um, they want to put some truthy stuff out in a much more professional way. And they've asked me if I'd like to be part of it. So I'm going to be talking to some of these people and see if it's something I'm willing to uh, put myself into. Um, obviously, we've got the radio show, that, which is you know relatively new. We've only done three shows so far. Um, I'm going to be hopefully I, I'm supposed to be concentrating on writing a book with regards to the serial killer aspect of stuff uh, that I discussed up at Truth Juice um, so lots and lots going on it, it just doesn't show any sign of stopping really and are you amazed I mean what time and time again we feel this and a lot of people who wake up or who are actually doing this from a moral conscience point of view they're, they are amazed at the amount of energy that they have with this and I, I kind of, I kind of have a name for it. I call it the truth drive, and mm. because you're on a path of knowledge, you're on a path of truth, and because of that, the energy—I don't know where it comes from, but it just comes. And it does, yeah. You know, it's just there, and it, everybody kind of talks about it, saying, "I don't know where all this energy comes from, but it, it's just there." And I guess, mm. you know. Yeah, I have days where where I'm exhausted by it and I think I can't do this anymore. And the next day I wake up and I'm I'm on fire again, ready to get out there and just go, you know. Yeah, we've 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 done that. Myself and Steve have talked before and we've said, you know, there's times where we think, well, you know, will we carry on? And all of a sudden, the next day, whatever, there's this massive energy comes in and whoop, there off we go again, you know. Yep. And, Absolutely, and it must be because we're on the path of truth. I mean, it's it's it's, yeah. it's just the way things are working, and more and more people want the truth, and not the kind of propaganda that we're getting from the media, from from all over the place. We'd love to. Uh, I mean, it'd be brilliant to see you. Um, have you been over to Ireland at all? I've never been to Ireland ever. And Thomas hasn't invited you over, has he not? Well, I have been invited over for the People's Internet Radio Christmas Party. Mm. Oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so I may well be coming over to Ireland. Right, okay. Well that's good. That's a good start. Um well that'd be good to for you to come over and experience it over here anyway and get a heads up on what's going on and meet, you know, because I think half the battle I mean yesterday I was meeting with Chris and Miles jo- Miles Johnson and we had never met. We've talked but we've never met. And it was great meeting up. I did a, an hour video with Miles and Chris was there and we talked for four and a half hours non-stop. And mm. it was just phenomenal and it was just open-minded, good intellectual conversation. And yeah. it just you just get a buzz from it. And, and that's what we found when we went up to Hull and we actually got to meet everybody. You know, I'd been speaking to Thomas for ages via Facebook and what have you and uh, I, on radio interviews that we were doing together. And, and when we first met face to face, it was so strange. And he said, oh, you really are real. And I was like, yeah, so are you, you know. But the the, the vibe that, that went on, um, a lovely lady who's part of Drew Juice up there, she put us all up in her house. And it it was an incredible couple of days. It, it, it was such an amazing buzz there. And uh, you really, to be in a room full of people who are all awake to the system, Everybody has got such valuable stuff to say, and it just it felt so great. Yeah, it's it's good when you have the camaraderie, and um, but I mean at the same time you you're gonna have your infiltrators, and yes. that's really what you have to watch out for. And I kind of I judge people not so much by what they say, but what their actions are, are like. 
And yeah. if their actions are anyway negative, that's when that's it. That's when the, the rope gets pulled in. Absolutely. Um, and that is why I have made a real concerted effort to, you know, a lot of people say to me, ignore the trolls, ignore this, ignore that. Whenever they put false information out about me, I immediately tackle it. Because to me, when people are first waking up and, and they're finding all this stuff out, they need people they can trust. Because if you can't trust the people who are giving you the information, what's the point in even looking? Exactly. It becomes so confusing and bewildering. Um, so I've, I've got to a stage where now the trolls barely touch me at the moment because all of the ludicrous things they've said about me. I mean, I had the other day, um, you're, not only are you a racist, now you hate bald people because I'd called in Duncan Smith a slaphead. Um, and I posted a picture on Facebook of me with my dad, who's as bald as a coot. That's, that's <laughs> and I said, now I hate bald people. Here's me and my dad. You know, I, it's just ludicrous. So I tackle everything all the time. And I am finding that actually it's been really positive because there's, they've run out of things to say about me. Oh, they, 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 they'll think of something. They'll say, next week it'll be that Danielle doesn't like people with big noses or small ears or, well, you know. I've got, I've got small ears and a massive nose, so they'll be out of luck with that one. <laughs> okay. I, I won't say any more. That might get derogatory to, the, to, to somebody else who's listening. Um, now, it's, it's, it's funny how they attack you. And when we sent you uh, a, a contact for us on Facebook and we didn't hear anything back, I was going, I was saying, I'm, I'm, I hope Danielle kind of checks out who we are because, you know, yeah. you probably get so many people contacting you and you you have to kind of filter out and who's who and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's why we kind of said to Finn, Finn, just let Danielle, we're trying to get in, let, let her know we're trying to get in touch with her for an interview for the, the radio show because yeah. you, you have to do that. You do, we get emails coming in from people. And, you know, some you will, the majority are great emails, we get links in, and it's it's brilliant, but, you know, you're always going to get the bad apples in the barrel, and you just have to be on your guard. Yeah, you absolutely do. I mean, I've I've had various bad apples, and, you know, you, you have to check people out, ask other people's opinion, and all kinds of stuff before you can make an informed decision, because all it takes is one wrong move, and it could mess things up for everybody. You know, you do have to be careful. Yeah, no, definitely, especially, uh, you know, and certain subjects that you're dealing with as well. Um, yes. So you're doing all this. I mean, it's brilliant with everything that you're doing. And uh, we talked about your family. Is there anything else on the, on your, on the agenda that you, you want to talk about or you want to tell people while you're, you know, we have you here talking to you? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think... <clears throat> What what I want people to, to really grasp is something I'm finding quite regularly is how easily sucked in people are. Um, and, I, and I am talking about people in the truth movement. Every single story that's put out there, people jump on and they don't realise sometimes that that these stories are put out there just uh, are just as much of a distraction as the mainstream media. Just as much. It is designed to uh, direct your attention elsewhere so they can get away with other stuff. Like, I'm finding that with the McCann case at the moment. All of this stuff going on with the McCann case, people are completely ignoring the fact that on November the 1st, the, the Lisbon Treaty will be finalised. Yeah. yeah. And people are completely ignoring. That is huge. That's and massive. all the McCann stuff is, is overshadowing that. Yeah, no, it's it's massive. It's going to have a major, major effect on all the truth movement if mm. if they you know they plan to do what we think they might be doing. Um, and we've said it already. We have said about the the Queen signing the last part of the treaty on the fourth of November and why it's important for people to realise this. And the whole kind of Ebola thing um, is all a distraction Ebola. technique. Yeah. Ebola, yeah, <laughs> the hoax. Um, it's all a distraction to keep people keep people's minds away from from that happening. Yeah. So, and I was talking to uh, Chris and Miles yesterday, and funny enough, one of the things that came up was the fact that, and what I always kind of say is that the worst people to trying to, to trying to wake up are the open, closed-minded people. Yeah. You know where you get you get people who'll say, "Oh, we don't like fracking. We don't like fracking's bad. That yada yada. Chemtrails. Oh yeah, you're a conspiracy theory." Yeah. You know, you're theorists. And you think, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. 
you have an open mind to the whole fracking thing, but you've got a closed mind to the the, the chemtrails. Have oh, you I've lost, uh, you know, I've had messages from people who've said, I thought you were great up until you said this wasn't real or, or that isn't true or whatever. And I just think, oh, God, <laughs> you know, you can just see it. They're, they're sheep in another herd. Yeah, well, see, the problem is, is that when you when you start investigating a lot of stuff, the rubber hole goes very deep, and there's a lot of rubber holes, and yeah. it brings you from left to right and further down and everything else. And you know, there there are certain people in the troop movement as, as well as you've experienced who will say to you, "Look, uh, Danielle, don't go down that rubber hole because that's really going to ruin your career. It's going to ruin everything if you go oh, down I've there." Oh, I've had that, yeah. You know, we we get that, and we, what we say is, look, we are a radio station, and we cover all subjects. It doesn't mean we agree with them, but we cover everything, and because we want our listeners, because you guaranteed we're going to have 33% of the people like a certain subject, and the other 33 don't like the certain so you know, so you try and, we try and get all the subjects on, and so we kind of try and please as much as, much as our audience as we can and what we do, but you will get that, you will get people saying... And the thing is, at the end of the day, there is truth in a lot of these rabbit holes that go down very deep. Whether they have gone down there themselves, I don't know. Maybe they have. But at the end of the day, we've come across stuff and we've had guests on telling us stuff that would just blow your mind. Yeah. But for the Joe Soap who's out on the street, you know, we know ourselves that you can't really um, go out and talk to them about it. You have to stick to the basic stuff. Until yeah. they get to a level that they have an open mind. And that's exactly what I've, I've been trying to tell people. You know, there's, I have uh, that phrase, snoofers, who are uh, snooty truthers, who look down their nose at me because they say, oh, I'm just a big mouth with, you know, without any knowledge and what have you. Like I always say, I am aiming what I'm doing at people who have no idea what's going on. Hmm. You cannot fill these people's heads with... 33rd degree Freemasonry and and satanic uh, child molestation and whatever they just don't don't they can't deal with that can't comprehend it because it's exactly it's not, it's not you in have there to yeah. start off with people they they know and already have a distrust for like MPs yeah exactly and and start off there again even if they only wake up and it's only about David Cameron or George Osborne with a prostitute then it's better than nothing it's better than nothing but that starts the ball rolling because if they question that they might start questioning other things and then Mm -hmm. they go on their journey of you know seeking the truth and trying to find out the information yeah and what's been really great for me is uh, uh, guys that are getting in touch with me and saying my girlfriend wouldn't listen to a bar of this I made her watch your videos and now she's starting to look for herself. Well, what that's really great. Well, what what was brilliant when you were talking about the video regarding the school system and your experience with it. I um sent that around on Facebook because there's a lot of mums and dads out there who are not familiar with the school system what what's going on or can relate to it to a certain extent. And that kind of helped expose things to you know, you get mums and dads saying, "Am I the only one seeing this?" Mm. You know? And you question yourself. And you yeah. think, maybe I should just stay quiet and not say anything. I, I must be going mad because everybody else doesn't seem to be questioning in this. Yeah. And, and, and what you're doing is helping people to actually say, actually, I'm not going mad. You know, this is going on. Yeah. And you know, that, that was a great video with regards to uh, people that, that really have no idea about the system. Even just teaching them about the school system will, will give them much more control over what's happening to their kids while they're at school. You know, we put our trust in these people. We don't know them. We have to send our kids there and, and what have you. And and people need to know what's going on with their kids while they're there. Now, if they if the schools were really fully transparent and they told us exactly how it was set up and what was going on. I mean, for example, my um, a couple of weeks ago, my son was sent home with a form for consent for two vaccines. <laughs> and, and you know um, did, so what I did is straight away I said no but my partner was kind of you know kind of well what if daddy that so we got in touch with and this is the great thing you'll find in a troop movement we have great guests on the show 
like yourself and we had Dr. Rima Lebeau on and she's a medical doctor of 44 years she's, she's based in Chile so I called Dr. Rima and I said Dr. Rima my partner's here and she's concerned about the vaccines and it just straight away she said no don't get vaccines and so yep. she she went into the big grant um, and talked to my partner regarding it. and it's brilliant being able to call on experts like that to actually answer a few questions for people who don't believe us yes um and yeah. sorry go ahead <laughs> no i was just going to say it is great if if you know people because people do have a, a trust of doctors so they're going to listen to a doctor. They're going to think, hang on a minute, they're a doctor. They must know what they're talking about. You know, so, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It does, it does help bolster the situation when you can have guests like this on. Yeah, definitely. And just, to, you know, talking about what, just to even the likes of myself and yourself and Steve, just talking about what's out there. And then obviously people, have, we'll have the podcast done at the end of the show. And for people who don't listen to the live version during the week, um, they'll be able to listen to it and you know and maybe they'll listen to it and they'll get a friend to listen to it and go what do you think of this and we'll check out this girl's website and and see what she's talking about and then they can see what you and it's all about and this is the great thing about people power and the social media and getting the information out there and even yesterday we were talking to Miles who's uh, well known as an engineer in pirate radio in the 80s and, mm. and he said on the video we're, we're putting the video together and he said the internet radio stations um, are a godsend as well as YouTube. The only one thing, the only bad thing about it is that they they know exactly who's doing what, when and where because it's all in yes. technology. But look, we're being tracked anyway. They can follow us anywhere. So, you know. Exactly. You know, they can find it where we are. Mobile phones, I mean, you know, they, they know what cell towers we're going and where we're going. But I do see a massive awakening going on. Um, at the moment and you've you've probably seen how long are you actually have have your has your mind been open um fully probably about four years and i have seen a huge absolutely huge increase in people that are waking up probably in the last year and a half especially to all different levels yeah yeah, absolutely. Just stunned by the amount of people that are starting to realise what's going on. Yeah, because we've seen, we were running the radio show about four and a half years. And in that four and, year, four and a half years, Steve, I think we can safely say um, we've seen an awful lot. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we've seen a lot, we've, we've heard a lot. And uh, as Alan said, I mean, he was wondering how long you've actually been awake to all this. Uh, that question was kind of a rising uh, also on the chat room, people are wondering how long because uh, people are kind of looking at your videos and it seems you've kind of sprung up out of nowhere and they're wondering. Yeah, I, but I think that's the impression people get is that you've sprung up out of nowhere. Um, there are hundreds, there's, there, there's thousands upon thousands of us that are awake now and we all communicate with each other via Facebook and, and um, various different social media platforms. And my face just wasn't known by the public. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I've been talking about this stuff for years. I've driven people insane with it for years, lost friends, all kinds. But it, it seems like I've popped up out of nowhere because the videos are so recent. You find but I've been harping on about this stuff for years. You find that when you get into a conversation with open-minded people, as I was yesterday, but you find that the conversation is just interesting. You're not talking crap. You're talking about stuff that is just intellectually, you know, interesting. Yes, and, and I really feel that it, it has some kind of effect on your psyche and your general mood. You know, it, it's so different than talking about the drudgery of, of work in life or M &M paying bills or, yeah. or all of the negative stuff they want us to think about it, it makes you feel incredibly positive it, generally physically yeah exactly that, and it's it's also great because we've seen it time and time again uh, just a big uh, thanks to ray there odd stands for oppositional defiant disorder the, right. the, so that's what we have that's the condition we have we're odd that's what we're suffering excellent from. So there you go. Um, odd, which is quite convenient, yeah, you know. I yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'd like being different. Anyway, um, but it's very important for people who are beginning to wake up. 
um, sometimes people are on their own and they feel that, you know, the friends and family around them are going, oh, you're just a nutter. And they're the people that should try and seek out people who are on the same kind of uh, brainwave information. That they, yeah, exactly. Because otherwise you do kind of question in certain things with yourself and think, well, is it me? But uh, I think, and as you say, and you might, you might have found that your friends have changed. People have come Very in and much. other people yeah. have gone out. Yeah. And, you know, it's almost like um, outing yourself as a truther. You know, I, I come across a lot of people who contact me and say, I'm, I, I'm too scared to tell my family what I know. They're going to think I'm mad, you know, yeah. and and it, it, that's quite a big thing. I get that a lot. Um, and it surprised me just how many people are frightened to tell their families and friends yeah. what's going on. I can see, I'm just getting a picture of an AA meeting, but it's a kind of truth movement meeting. Yeah. <laughs> that you <laughs> have to attend. And stand up. Yeah, my name's Alan, and I'm a truther. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alan. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Whereas some of us just can't help it, and I've got such, I've got such a big gob, I, do, I, I can't help but shout it from the rooftops, you know, but I'm, uh, I, I suppose I'm just one of those people that couldn't help but say, this is insanity. Just sort it out. Well, Steve um, has a good approach to people. You, you say you normally go up, and when you give them a, a say something to them, and they look at you, you normally say, "You mean you don't know that?" Tell them. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> that's what I do. I, I, I've been doing this a while, Danielle, and I've tried different different approaches. Maybe the same as everyone else. But the, my latest approach, and it seems to be actually working, is when I'll go up and I'll, I'll tell someone, I, well, let's, we'll use chemtrails as an example. Uh, I might go up to, to someone and I'll go, yeah, you see those bloody chemtrails, all the, all, the, all the crap they're spraying down on us. And I say it in kind of a real, everyone knows this. And if someone goes to me, what are you talking about? I kind of go, what? Do, do, do you, don't, you don't know about that, do you know? Oh, where have you I, been? I do, yeah, I do that to the mums at the school and they all look at me like I'm barking. It's brilliant. <laughs> No, it's 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 brilliant. But again, what we we always say about question, you know, if I don't want when I would talk to people about it, and if they're not open minded, and they say, oh yeah, no, that's a lot of crap or whatever, I go, well, is that your opinion or yeah. is that research? And if they say, well, it's my opinion, I go, well, I, actually, thanks, but I don't want your opinion. I'm not interested in your exactly. opinion. Exactly. And but, and this is the thing with people, they try to tell you that what you're saying is opinion. No, it's fact. Yeah, it's it is fact. Yeah, and exactly. And then people say, I mean, we have certain, over the years, built up certain kind of techniques we use to kind of find out how people think and how the mind works. And, you know, um, and, and Thomas, we, we, t when we did the, the talk down in Waterford, Thomas was there. And, uh, Thomas has been on and we've talked psychology a lot with Thomas on the show. And it, we, it, the, the talk that we did, the lecture that we did down there was all about, you know, opening your mind and having an open mind and how it works. And if somebody, if you've gone to the bother basically to go and do all the research and somebody then says, oh no, you're talking all the crap. I mean, they are insulting your intelligence. So I normally say to yeah. people, you know, don't, um, don't insult my, my intelligence with your ignorance. Exactly. Un unless they and have I've absolutely no doubt that you boys get called a bimbo just as much as I do. Oh, look, you know, I've never been called a bimbo. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we have faces for radio. I don't know about voices for radio. We definitely have faces for radio. That's for and sure. we've bodies that are built for comfort, not for speed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, it, I'm kind of, uh, we're less like Brad Pitt and more like Armpit, aren't we? I, I think we <laughs> well, you smell like Armpit, yeah. <laughs> Right, well listen, we're going to love you and leave you because you're, I know you have two, uh, two sick kids and you have to take care of them and we've taken up a lot of your time. We do appreciate you coming on. You've done a fantastic job. Your videos are brilliant, very entertaining and I, we, we urge everybody to pop over. I'm going to pass you over to Steve in a minute and Steve's going to get all your details. But, um, fair play to what you're doing and fair, to, fair play to put your, put yourself out there. And Thank I think, you. I it's, think, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure to come on and I really appreciate you giving me the time and, and all of you welcoming me so openly to, to the movement and everything. It's great. No, that's it. Well, look, that's what it's all about. We, we you know, we're all a kind of a little group, so to speak, mm. and we all, and we are putting our neck. I don't think we're little. Well, we know we're quite big. We are, yeah. put, we are putting our neck on the line and the serious mm -hmm. thing is, is that we are opening ourselves to, attacks and everything else so we all kind of have to support each other in any way we can yeah and i think that is important and we have to know who our friends are and we have to know who our enemies are 
Um, and I'd like to uh, I'd like to think you're you've joined the club from an OAM point of view anyway. And, Absolutely, um, I'll come on any time you want me. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Because we might uh, double up, we might get another guest in, and then you know, and we might get you and Lou Lou on um, at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh, we might get the mad taxi driver on. Maybe we might get him oh, on. Oh, God, never I know. would love that. I would absolutely love that. That would be brilliant. We have to try and track him down. But listen, yeah. you've, you're doing a great job. And fair play Thank to what you. you're doing. And uh, good luck with the radio show. I know it's going to be successful. And I know you, things are going to pick up and you're going to do more talks. And just carry on what you're doing. It's, it's, it's great. It's entertaining and it's educational. So, you know, a big thank you from myself. And Steve's going to get all your details so people know where to find you. So off to you, Steve. Brilliant. Yeah, Danielle, I want to echo what Alan said. Uh, you, you are doing a great job. I love the videos too. I am going to check out more of them um, just to find out, just is it a green screen? I want, I want to know the answer. <laughs> but, but come here, anyway. Yeah. Get the disguises on. The disguises are very good. Yeah, and come, yeah. come here, while, you, while you're there, will you give us the website and the YouTube channel so anyone listening can, or anyone checking out the uh, the podcast Jordan the Week can yes, uh, find uh, out more? the radio show that Lou, Lou Collins and I do goes up on a podcast uh, the following day, but we're actually live at midnight on a Thursday, and it's called No Holds Barred. Um, we've got a Facebook page and we've got um, our own website that you can go and have a look at and, and listen to the podcasts on. Uh, my YouTube channel, I am on YouTube as Danielle La Verite. Uh, my Facebook, which some of you know I've had major problems with this week, I am now on Facebook as Danielle George La Verite. Um, and that's open and you can find me on there. Um, and my website is DanielleLaVerite.com. Oh, okay. So, uh, no, no long names anyway, because uh, what normally happens is people start giving out their web address, and I'm frantically trying to type <laughs> it in here, and I've only got short fingers, so that's grand. So everything is Daniel Danielle LaVerite. Yes. And if they go to the OAM Facebook page, we have posted a couple of videos up there, so if they want to get access to your YouTube page via uh, Facebook, they can do that as well. Oh, and just a, Thank you. Just a comment from uh, QWERTY. He said, um, the movement is getting sexier, lads, so a facelift and a boob job is going to help. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about my man boobs. I'm not going to go down that road. Well, you could certainly do doing something with them, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. Okay. <laughs> Right, Danielle, stay with us there for a minute. We're going to go off to a bit of music and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com and People'sInternetRadio.com. Yeah, we're back. That's a little bit of a nice bit of music there by a, <laughs> by a band called Sentinel. And that is their latest track and it's called The Sentinel. Yes, indeed. Brilliant, brilliant piece of music. Actually, that's a song. It is a song called Sentinel. It was sent in from one of our listeners, listeners called Seamus. And that's Seamus' daughter singing. Uh, she's obviously the lead singer of the band. They, Alan was just telling me there during the break, they actually have a YouTube channel as well. And you can check out the music video. We know it's not everybody's taste, but we, you know, it's, it's nice for someone to take the time to actually send it in. Because we're always kind of looking for unsigned bands, if anyone has their own music or it doesn't matter what it could be country and western it could be hard rock it could be whatever it is but if it's if you're unsigned we will play it we'll give you the airplay so uh, yeah is that, sentinel is that all music we play everything yes everything well sure why not okay well like i mean what country and western would you not would you not go for that now no i don't mind country and western but there's probably some music that i just kind of i'd be cringing but anyway, we don't have time to talk about yeah, that. No, we, we have don't. a few minutes. <laughs> right, okay. Um, next week, we will... Brilliant uh, guest, Danielle. Fair play to what she's doing. Check out her videos. Brilliant videos. She does it in a, in a great way. Bit of humour. Um, don't let the kids... Make sure the kids are not in the room because there is some language used on the videos. So just to let you know about that. Now, next week, as part of our Wake Up to Wireless... The Danger of Wireless Technology, we have um, Ollie Johansson coming on the show he's an assistant professor in neuroscience over in europe and we're going to get ollie on we're going to be talking about all the dangers of wireless technology and uh, his take on it and how it affects our brains and our children's brains and all that kind of stuff so that's going to be very interesting and the other thing that obviously it, it, we mentioned you know earlier with uh, danielle was the ebola or ebola or the hoax that's going on now, I don't know how true this is, but I have seen posted up there that people in Liberia um, have said that the only people that are coming down with the Ebola 
virus are the ones that were vaccinated by the Red Cross and they're proceeding to kick the Red Cross out of the country. Um, so, uh, again, I think they're trying to get the pandemic, they're trying to scaremonger and everybody, you know, trying to uh, believe that that's what's going on. And I don't think they're having success with it because people are just going, yeah, whatever, you know, and just carrying on with their lives. And um, fair play for doing that. Don't don't fear it. Um, yeah, no, I'm just going to say it's amazing that, I mean, people are hearing about this on TV and there should be there should be a lot of panic, but there's not really. You know, people are kind of going... Really, Ebola? Yeah, okay. And they're just getting on with their lives. I mean, yeah. what, what was it? What was the the the, the board pl- board flu, the avian board flu, the H one M one virus? You know, I think people are just kind of going, mm, yeah, okay. And you and you're right. It's it's something like that hits hits the mainstream, and all of a sudden, within a very very short period of time, it's okay. We've got a vaccine for just for that. Yeah, well, they want yeah. to, they basically, I'm sure everybody knows, they want to mandate the vaccine. Dr. Rehm has been trying to get nano silver over to uh, South Africa, over to Africa to actually help with the Ebola that is there. And the World Health Organization, who you would think would actually be very keen to have them do that, is stopping all shipments of nano silver over there because they want to have this vaccine, which is not even tested, uh, really. Um, and you want everybody to have this, and obviously they want to be able to do it for you know all countries make it mandatory, so we all get injected with heavy metals, and of course there's no comeback if you have an adverse effect against it, you know. So, you know, with the signing of the the uh, the treaty on the first November, we really need to start ramping up things. I mean, I know Ireland has has been doing fantastic. I have been amazed, and the amount of people waking up and the amount of groups and everything else it's been fantastic in ireland fair play to everybody for waking up and doing and getting involved in the protests and everything else you're doing a fantastic job and we just need another push and uh, uh, loads of people saying that we're gonna we need to get the governments out there's four parties there now and they're all the same tweedledum tweedledee all right they're all the same and we just need to remove them we need to change the the paradigm we need to stop thinking of about this system we need to reissue the punt we need to you know stop trying to uh, fix we're trying to treat the symptom and not the cause we need to reissue the punt have the government reissue it either through the maybe through the post offices interest free of course and then bring in direct democracy and so we can fix the problem we have the solutions for the problems and we have the people to solve it we just need to maybe have this ma- massive referendum. I know Harry talks about registered letters. Um, it's the same. One registered letter is equal to 13,000, something like that. But maybe we'll have to do something like that. We'll have to sort it out. But we're going to pass over to uh, PIR. Do you know who Vin has on tonight? Yes, I do. Would well, you like me to tell you? <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> right, stay tuned. Uh, Vin has Tom Ryan on tonight. He's going to be Vin's guest in the... Uh in the, well, I was going to say in the studio, but, but he's going to be Vin's guest on the radio anyway. Okay, brilliant stuff. Okay, well, we're going to pass over the stream to Vin, and so we can pick it up there. So, uh, for myself, as I say, we're going to get the Miles uh, Johnson video up uh, during the week, and you can have a look at that after the interview. A big thank you to Chris again for sorting all that out yesterday. Uh, very enjoyable, Chris. Well done. Thanks for doing that. Great meeting you as well after all this time, and, and Miles and uh, we'll have to organise another uh, another um, meeting sometime down the line. But for myself, uh, Alan James, take it easy, stay safe. If you have any news, email us, let us know, and we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. OK, and for myself as well, Stephen George, take it easy. Uh, again, apologies to Chris. Sorry I didn't get to meet you yesterday, but you know exactly where I was, and I might meet you at the next one. So uh, we'll do it all again in seven days' time. Take care, folks. Stay tuned for Vin on PIR. Bye-bye. Oh, you're mine, you're mine.